The next speaker for three minutes, Lord Dartmouth, on behalf of the European Freedom and Direct Democracy Group. Yes, first of all, I'd like to start by giving my sincere birth birthday greetings to the very distinguished and able Chairman of the International Trade Committee of the Europe European Parliament, uh, MEP Bernard Langer. Also, may I also restate the, my birthday greetings to the, to, the, to, to the Chair, and if it's not presumptuous to congratulate the Chair on her immaculate Chairman of this, uh, of this debate. Now, trade takes place. It has to take place under agreed rules that are set internationally. And it should be noted that we're talking about international rules, not EU rules. And if a trade partner behaves in a way that is unfair, then the wronged party must be able to take appropriate action. And almost always, the unfair practice takes the form of exporting below the cost of production. In one word, dumping. And by the way, it's a, it's a huge relief that in the jargon-ridden etymology of trade, dumping is a great word. It conveys more or less exactly what it is. So far, so good. But there is a problem. There's an EU problem. The EU is a customs union. Anti-dumping duties imposed by the EU have to be agreed by every member state. Now, as some of us will remember from two years ago, the, Euro the European Steel Association, Eurofer, Eurofer, was crystal clear that China was systematically dumping steel. However, by the time that the EU Commission finally got agreement and imposed anti-dumping duties, it was too little, too late. The EU put on only a 40% tariff. By comparison, the United States had previously and quickly and almost in time put on a 300% tariff, i.e. one that really worked. Now, if, now, in the debate that took place uh, on steel in China two years ago, our distinguished colleague made an important point that was partly valid. The then Cameron, Os he was right, the then Cameron Osborne UK government would have been unlikely to impose the necessary tariffs on steel produced on China. However, the point is not what they wouldn't or wouldn't have done. The point is that outside the EU, the then British government could have imposed the necessary tariffs. The fact is that the European Union is just too large, too awkward, too clumsy, too divided, too inept to be able to make proper and timely decisions on, Europe, on trade defence in instruments. In this context, as in so many others, the EU is not fit for purpose. Thank you very much. Lord Dartmouth, uh, you have a blue card from uh, Mr. Fjellner. And uh, I see that you accept. So, Mr. Fjellner. Thank you very much, Madam President. I have a question for uh, Lord Dartmouth. Are you aware of the fact that in the US you can have life in prison to be 300 years? I just wonder, do you think it's a wise idea? Because I understand that you're upset with the fact that in Europe we have maybe a tariff of 40% instead of 300%. Have it ever occurred to you that virtually all trade might actually stop even at 40%, which means that those extra 260% doesn't really matter, as maybe the extra 250 years of life in prison in the US might not matter that much. The, the, the um, question ill becomes somebody of Mr. Fellner's intellectual precision and clarity. The fact of the matter is that the 40% was not enough to stop the dumping. The 300% was enough to stop the dumping. That is the point, a point that I, fe that I feel that I made very clear at the time. Thank you. 